All right, uh, we're going to look at a couple more examples. Uh, the first thing we're going to start out with this, it's uh, basically a careless mistake. All right, a lot of students miss this problem. Some of you guys will look at this, and if I gave you time to work on it, uh, you would tell me that this is going to be 7. Well, that's not true. Okay, And the reason it's not true is because this radical, just like absolute value, is a grouping symbol. So you can't, you can't use... Uh, use the rules for a monomial as you would the rules for a binomial. So right now we have two terms. So what we need to do is know that because that's a grouping symbol we do what's under the radical first. So what we'd really do is say uh, the square root of 9 plus 16 is really the square root of 25 which will give us an answer of 5. So just make sure that you realize that if you have more than one term under your radical that you actually have to try to add those things together. You can't take the square root of each individual part like what we're doing with these monomials. Okay? So this problem right here, as you can see, is a monomial. There's only one term under there. There's no plus or minus sign. All right, well, we've got this bad boy. Uh, square root of 500, x to the fourth, y to the ninth. Okay, so what we do first is say, well, for starters, as you can see, we have variables. So that's going to change the game a little bit. Uh, well, 500. Well, is 500 a perfect square? So we have to deal with our coefficient, and we also have to deal with our variables. 500 is not a perfect square, but there are perfect squares that will go into 500. 4, for example, will go into 500. 25 will go into 500. But the largest perfect square that will go into 500 is 100. So we're going to say 100 and then times 5. So those two things have to multiply to give me this, which I think they do. Now, what we have is we have a variable. We have x to the fourth. So x to the fourth is really represented by this right here. Now, to be able to take the square root of uh, something, what you're trying to do is figure out, you know, we have the square root of x to the fourth. So we have four x's, and what we're going to try to do is say, can we take the square root? Well, we can, because, you know, if you do this and say, well, what can you multiply by itself to give you x to the fourth, then you would say, okay, well, we can multiply x squared times uh, x squared. So x to the fourth is a perfect root, so therefore we're going to group it with the other thing that's a perfect root. And an easy way to do this whenever you're dealing with variables is you're going to take your index, which as we said, is assume two, and divide it into the exponent. If it goes into it evenly, then it's a perfect root. So for instance, looking at our y's, what we actually have is, will 2 go into 9 evenly? And that answer is no. So what we actually have is we have 9 y's here. Up there, I wrote down 9. Okay. Now, 9 is not a perfect square root. We can't take the square root of y to the ninth evenly. But what we'd really like to try to do is to break it up into things that we could take the square root of evenly. Okay, well we could do this. We could say, well if we group 2, then that would be y squared. 2 will go into 2 evenly, but unfortunately that's not the largest perfect square. 4 would also work. 6 would work. But what we'd like to do is really do 8. So we can take the square root of y to the 8th. Okay, because, you know, uh, what we would do is we would say that's y to the 4th times y to the 4th will give us y to the 8th. Because when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So what we would do is we would group it together, and we would put y to the 8th here. And then we need y to the 9th, so we still need another y, and we're going to put that with a 5, which is the other part that is not a perfect root. So again, we'll use the product rule, and we'll break it up into two radicals. So it'll be the square root of 100, x to the 4th, y to the 8th, and then times the square root of 5y. So when we take the square root of this term right here, uh, we will get 10x squared. Again, take the index and divide it into the exponent. 2 will go into 4 2 times, so we get that. And there'll be y, 2 will go into 8 4 times, times the square root of 5y. So that's simplifying a radical. We'll look at one more example. We have the cube root of 1 27th. Okay, we're going to study the quotient rule. 
uh, a little bit here in just a second, but we can also use this uh, and simplify as is. And since it's a fraction, you're really looking for what fraction can you multiply by itself to give you uh, 1 27th. And what you should be able to see is that since this is a perfect root, we will get 1, and this is a perfect root, so we get a nice little 3. So 1 third is the answer to that. 1 third times 1 third is 1 ninth, and then 1 ninth times 1 third will give us 1 27th. So the cube root of 1 over 27 is 1 over 3.